And so effectively, I, let me see if I can help out here. Um, I know that was a, a bit confusing. Um, we And I know this is going to flash the yellow circles, and I'm sorry about that. Um, we have two things going on here. Okay, So we have the relational data warehouse, and that's inside of SQL Server. And then we have the cube, and that is inside of analysis services. And so when we deployed the cube inside of Visual Studio, it created the database in SSAS, created the cube inside the database, and then it populated the cube oops, here, based on queries that it re uh, executed against the relational data warehouse. Okay, so that's how the cube was populated. Okay, so we call this a processing the cube. Okay. So think of the a cube as empty, and when you process the cube, it's going to select all of the rows from the relational data warehouse and perform all of the aggregations. Now that's the initial process. Later on, subsequent processes may just be getting the changed rows that have changed since the last process, right? So let's give it something to change. And this is where this script comes in. So this is where the miss dot uh, miss01.sql. What we're going to do is insert an order for product key 559. So we're adding a product key 559 so that now when we come back and say show me the sales for 559 in the SQL server there is now an order. Maybe this will help you but look the data warehouse has not been updated. The data warehouse still shows no orders. Now, if we've changed this filter to be 560, take out 559, you could see that there have been 81 orders of product 560. But when we go to 559, there are no orders. So the cube is now different from the actual relational data warehouse. To update the cube, we must process the cube. Processing the cube runs those queries to update the cube. Awesome. Here we go. Back to integration services now. I know it's difficult to flip between these three environments here. But so I'm back over here in integration services. And let's drag now the uh, processing task. Okay, analysis services processing. Make my connection here. Uh, so it picked up the connection that I had previously set from the DDL task. You could make a new one. And what is it that you would like to process? Well, I want to process. You, in, in a real data warehouse, you might have many different cubes. Uh, notice we can just process these measures. That's what those are down there. Uh, but I'm going to process the entire database here. OK, there we go. Now I can change the settings. So if you understand all of these settings, great. If you don't, don't worry about it right now. This is just a high level overview of here's what it is, here's what it does, here's how to use it. Uh, we're just going to say OK. And I say OK. And I execute the task. And right now, if we take and use Profiler, SQL Server Profiler, maybe we'll catch it, uh, maybe we won't. And we hook this up to our, ah, I missed it because you saw it turn green there. Uh, but if we hooked this up to our SQL server, so a new trace of the database engine, and let's run this again. Uh, by the way, uh, if we go back over here and refresh now, you, uh, oops, the current session is no longer valid due to structural changes in the database. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, let's go back and do the cube browser again so that I can show you this, the order quantity and the extended amount. And again, same filter we did before. Product key, is that what that is? Yeah. And 559 was it, I believe. There it is. You see that the data warehouse now shows that it is in sync with the relational data warehouse. Okay, because we processed it. Okay. Now back into the profiler, I'm running this against the relational database. 
the AdventureWorks 2008 DW. And I want to show you what happens when we process the cube. So I'm going to come back into Integration Services, and I'm going to reprocess the cube so that it picks up any new changes. So we execute it, take a look over here in Profiler. Look what it's doing. It's grabbing all of these queries, and it's executing all of those queries against that relational data warehouse. And then it's synchronizing the results that it gets with the actual cube. So you can actually see exactly what it's doing. And this may not be efficient. This may not be what you want. Notice there's no where clause on any of these. You might have a where clause. You might have specific things that you want to get. So there are more things that you can control, but it does show you what's actually happening inside the SQL Server when we process a cube. Okay. Now, one final thing about this. Let me just show you what would happen here if we go now to the back to SQL Server, back in the AdventureWorks DW, and delete that same row we just added. Okay. So if we take a look, we've now removed it from the actual data warehouse. Let's rebrowse the cube again. Has it changed? Okay, so let's come back over here. I hate that it's, I have to redefine that each time. Uh, let's see, come back over here. And again, product, product key. Scroll, 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 almost, there we go, okay. But notice that the data warehouse still shows it. Bonus question, why does the data warehouse show that we still have that row? How can we fix it? We have to process the cube, right? We haven't processed the cube, which goes and gets the changed data. So we come back to integration services, and we process the cube. So that's our processing task there. Once we process it, probably going to have to redo this again. Probably won't be able to refresh. Yeah, I won't, can't do that. So I'm just going to have to do it again. And yeah, whatever, we'll just drag the whole thing down there. Um, product key, where are you? And right here. And you can see it's now gone. Okay, so now there are no rows. So it's been processed and now it's up to date. Okay. All right, so we're going to go into much more detail about the processing task in Chapter 6. So let's now move on to the third one here, the data mining. Okay, so the data mining query task here, we're really not going to cover too much in this course because it does require you have to have a mining model set up here. Um, the purpose here of working with the data mining query task, notice that you can build the query, you can have parameters, and you're going to output a table. So that's the purpose of this is you're going to have the output of a table that you're going to store the results of running the data mining query task. Data mining is very expensive on your server. So to be able to store this as an output table for later processing is going to save you a lot of time. Um, this is a pretty advanced task. Uh, this is one where you really need to understand what data mining models are, which algorithm that you need to use. There's a lot a lot more to it that we're going to then we're going to be able to cover in just an integration services task uh, video.